Hi, my name is Heather Havenwood, and I'm here to take talk to you about overcoming fear, specifically for the ladies. Um, my name is Heather Havenwood, and I am a business and marketing coach. I've been in the information market industry and doing this for 15 years, since 2001, uh, mainly after a time in my life that I was number one in sales at a big company, and I got fired. And that was the first, my first, what I call overcoming adversity, overcoming fear that happened. I had no idea that was going to be my first, that, that that was a major deal. And I was completely distraught. And I'm going to share that story with you. But I had no idea that was going to be like a tiny little fingerprint in my future. So I'm going to share with you today kind of overcoming um, adversity, overcoming fear. It's literally the number one thing that people constantly ask me about. Um, so I'm going to share that with you. Okay. So awesome. Now I'm constantly interviewed about this. So, so if you find an interview with me in a podcast, just type my name in Heather Havenwood and iTunes and most of the podcasts that are out there. I share and I've been on over 300 at this point. So feel free to listen to, to them interview me, but I just want to share this with you. So here's the story that people constantly ask me. Um, so I was Back in 2001, I started traveling the country uh, doing information marketing seminars. So what that means is if you ever saw an infomercial, right, like, do you want to control your life? Do you want to make money and come to the seminar at one o'clock? Back then, I was usually the person there, either in the front of the room or the back of the room or whatever. And we would, I, this is where I learned sales. I learned sales in a very cool place, which is in front of people, in front of their eyes. I would, I would literally go from stranger in an hour and a half. I had to literally go from no like, and trust and basically ask people for $3,000. I had to overcome my fear of asking strangers for credit cards. That was interesting. So a lot of internal stuff that happened there. But in 2004, I had a, a client who reached out to me and said, Hey, look, I'm really good at this whole buying and selling houses thing. I'm a lawyer and I'm really great at it. But you're good at this whole marketing thing. How do I get myself out there? How do I brand myself? How do I create a seminar? How do I create events? Because there's two parts of the business. If you've ever bought a course before, there's two parts. There's like the branding part and that whole piece, branding, marketing, the messaging, the market. There's three elements, market, message, media, which is what I teach in my courses as well as my coaching. But then the other piece is, you know, what exactly do you teach? So whenever I have my clients and even back then in 2004, I say, look, my job is not to tell you or teach you how to buy and sell houses. That's your expertise. My job is to market you into amazement. So we did that. We did a great job. He's around to this day. We went from zero to a million dollars in one year. It was great. Did seminars, events, products. It was awesome. He's a great teacher. So that was great. However, not a great business partner. So um, one day I came home and, you know, everything was gone. I came back from actually a marketing seminar. I was super excited to tell him all the different changes we were going to make and the new marketing tactics for that year, December 5th, 2005. I remember that day quite well on a Monday and I walked into my house where it was headquarters and uh, the credit cards, and the uh, basically all the computers were gone, but everything was shifted. The bank accounts were emptied. I was locked out of all the accounts, blah, blah, blah. So here's the th first, my first, what I call real lesson in life. I had put all my eggs in this basket. I had put all my focus on him and that business. I had killed off everything else. I had like been super focused on him and that business, right? That business, we're business partners. And uh, that was my mistake, number one. I didn't really make sure I had a backup plan. I was just so focused on building this and proving myself. If y'all ever experienced women, we got to prove ourselves, right? So I was really focused on proving myself. And then I came home and everything was gone and my house was um, being triggered into foreclosure about about a month or two in, this is early 2006, this is right before the crash. So crash really hit 2008, but it was like starting to kind of like go down in Florida and that's where I was at. So it was already starting to hit in Florida, central Florida at that time. So my house was underwater immediately. It was flipped upside down, meaning, meaning I owed more than it was worth. But six months prior, I owed, uh, I actually, it was worth more than I owed. So it got flipped. So I couldn't sell it really fast. Uh, I ended up short selling the property before I hit the foreclosure, but I had to file personal bankruptcy because I had like nothing coming in. I mean, nothing. And if I had had Uber back then, I would have been getting an Uber the next day and like, let's drive Uber. But there was just like this deadness, right? And I had to really come to grips. This is my first time in my life that 
I really had failure. Like before I've been fired and I've been told that you're not very good at waiting tables and you're not very good at other stuff. I'm like, whatever. But this, I, I'm pretty smart. I'm pretty intelligent. How did this happen to me? This can't happen to me. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I have a, I have a degree. I'm, I come from a family of like winners, right? So it really had, it took me as a person, as a woman, as single woman, I didn't have a husband to be like, honey, you take over while I'm just like chilling out, eating bonbons and going to therapy. I couldn't do that. I had to like survive. I remember at the bottom, I mean, this is the bottom, right? I was so depressed. Um, I didn't have any money. And I mean, guys, this is, I didn't have any money. My uh, pastor's wife came by and brought me toilet paper. I started crying because I, like that to me for a long time was like, uh, I couldn't even buy that, you know? So I had this beautiful house. It was going through foreclosure and bankruptcy, but I just, I mean, it was like that. Just the money just shut off and I had no backup. And I did call my father and I asked for a thousand dollars just to like breathe, to eat or whatever. And he laughed in my face. So he said, you're, you did this to yourself. You figured it out. Harsh reality. What brought me out of this was a lot. There wasn't just one thing. It was a ton. I had good friends. I ended up on people's couches. Um, I cried a lot, mainly because I was super ashamed by it. I mean, I was super ashamed by it because for me, I was smart and intelligent. How did this happen to me? And the reason I'm sharing this with you ladies is that I know that you're maybe not going through my situation, but you're going through something similar that you might feel ashamed. You might feel Oh my God, I thought I was smarter than this. Or how did I not see it? That was a big one. People are like, why didn't you see it? I'm like, how did I not see it? He's in Pennsylvania. We're rocking. Why would he ever destroy something that was just killing it? To me, that was crazy. Um, he didn't destroy it. It's still very viable today. His business is very viable today because I just got him off, you know, I got him off the platform and now he's still successful in 2018. My point is, is that I think all of us, all of us, women, men included, we when we're focused so much on something, we sometimes don't see the red flags. Looking back, there were a ton of red flags. My biggest mistake during that is called my own lawyer. I, my, he was a lawyer, so I trusted the contract. Looking back, I was only 30. I was 30 years old, making my first million, super excited, just because I was given the opportunity. So I, 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 I wanna share this video with you because I think all of us get so afraid of basically getting hit, what I call getting hit. I call it getting hit. The reason I have that analogy is football. And this is where I want to end this, this video. I love football. I'm a Cowboys fan, just so you know. And one of the things I always say to myself, and actually my father said it to me at that time, which at the time was not exactly what advice I needed, but you know, it helped out. He said, if you don't want to get hit, get out of the game. If you don't want to get hit in business or in entrepreneurship, then go get a government job. Now, at the time, it's not exactly the advice I wanted. I wanted to be cuddled and held and told, tell me everything's going to be okay, honey. But that's not what I got. I got, if you don't want to get hit, then get out of the damn game. And there's some truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. And I say that to my clients sometimes, more in a loving way though, is you might get hit with lawsuits or a uh, I have, a, I have a client right now that has a, a, an ex-client who's potentially stealing some things from her. Like, there's always things going on. If you want it really safe, do not become an entrepreneur. Do not work online. Do not create something. I am telling you, go get a government job and stick there for the next 30 years. Because as an entrepreneur, you're going to get potentially hit. And, and the reason I say this in the most loving way is... If I was an NFL player for the Dallas Cowboys, of course, I imagine if I'm on the sideline and I call Jerry Jones, I'm like, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Jones, who's the owner of the Cowboys, if you don't know that, Jerry, I don't want to get hit today. He's like, well, then get off my damn field and go to the locker room and give me back my millions of dollars I gave you and give me back my uniform. That's exactly what he'd say. Do not be an NFL player. You cannot be an NFL player, a pro, and get out there and not get hit. That's just what happens. So when you're in business, you're going to get hit. So what do you do? You protect yourself, what I call with legal, with image, with, with contracts, with things. You just be smart about it. And the reason I'm sharing this with you because I think a lot of women 
get super scared. They call me and go, I want to make sure that if I do this venture, you got to promise me it's going to work. And I'm like, I can't promise you that. No one can promise you that. No one can promise you that. So you've got to be more aware of the risks and just accept them. And now I do. Now I do. The overcoming the fear and failures, like I really got at a clear level that I'm an entrepreneur. It's who I am. I am an entrepreneur. So what do entrepreneurs do? We create, we make things happen. We create businesses, we create opportunities, we create situations. That's what we do, we create commerce. So I just kind of took it on and I wanna share that with you today that honestly, as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, even as a career woman, you've got to be willing to take risks and, and no, you might get hit. So that's my, uh, little rant today. Real and Raw by Heather Havenwood. If you like, you like. If you don't like, that's fine too. Just comment below.